you guys, it's Nassim here. Now, ever since Apple has introduced the iPhone 14 lineup, many of you guys have been concerned as to whether or not you should get the iPhone 14 Pro Max or just the regular iPhone 14. And in this video, I wanna break down what each phone is good at based on various stages of use. Now the iPhone 14 and iPhone 14 Pro Max are two phones that really have a lot in common and also have many differences. They both have a suitable hardware complemented with similar hardware to their counterparts. Both support the latest versions of iOS 16, both have really good looking displays that offer a premium visual experience and both have very high prices when compared to other phones in their respective categories. But looking at them from an individual standpoint, there are some things that each phone is really good at. The iPhone 14 Pro Max has a better looking display, a more premium build, and many more features. And the iPhone 14 has many valuable advantages. It has a very nice display and build. It has a really good battery for its price. And although its glass back might not be as durable, the most important factor is, is that it's a cheaper price. So even though both of these phones have had many things that were good, they both had their downsides when it came to many different things. And today we will be taking a look into what each phone has to offer so that it can help your decision on which one is actually worth buying. So I will be comparing the iPhone 14 and the iPhone 14 Pro Max based on five different categories, starting with display, software, battery, speakers, and last but not least, cameras. Now the first thing that I want to look at when it comes to both of these phones is the display. Now the iPhone 14 has a 6.1 inch display and the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a 6.7 inch Super Retina XDR display that are very comparable to each other as far as visual experience. The main difference between them is that the iPhone 14 Pro Max has a much bigger screen and also has a 120 hertz refresh rate, which basically means that whenever you're doing things like scrolling or moving through the software, it'll feel much smoother and it'll give you a better visual experience. Now when it comes to responsiveness, the 14 Pro Max did a much better job than the 14 because there were times where my 14 will respond a little slower whenever I scroll through the OS. So as far as display, the 14 Pro is more responsive, but just like last year, both phones are prone to overheat, which can result in more lags. Now when it comes to the size of the displays, the 14 Pro Max is much better in this category because not only does it have a bigger screen, but it also has slimmer bezels, which means that you get an overall better experience. Like right here, we can see both phones side by side and you can definitely tell the difference between the two, including the pill shaped notch. And speaking of notches, the iPhone 14 has the exact same look as the previous iPhones, but the iPhone 14 Pro Max has completely changed its look with its latest release of the dynamic island pill shaped notch. And when it came to brightness, I would say that the 14 Pro Max was much brighter and that's because it has more nits when compared to the 14. And don't get me wrong, the 14 is good as well, but the 14 Pro Max was much better. And now the final thing that I really liked about both the 14 Pro Max and the 14's display was the fact that it had really great resolutions. Both phones had nice and vibrant colors, both phones had sharp displays, and both phones gave me an overall great experience. So I will say that in terms of resolution when watching videos, the 14 Pro Max definitely was better, but the 14 definitely held its own weight. Now after the display, the next thing I wanna look at is the software. Now when it came to software, I would say that both the 14 and 14 Pro Max performed really well. They both did whatever I needed them to do very efficiently, but again, the 14 Pro Max responded much faster whenever I used it. And even though the 14 Pro Max was able to handle the software much smoother, the animations were also much better. I still would get lags here and there, but it was much less often. But when it came to my 14, there would be times where the OS was laggy whenever it got hot. And trust me, it would get hot more often. Like I would be normally using my phone and it would start to lag a little. So in certain situations, I would get frustrated that it wasn't responding well enough. Now, when it comes to software running heavier apps, I had much less problems with my 14 Pro Max than my 14. The 14 Pro Max ran really smooth whenever the extra ventilation kicked in and it felt much easier when controlling power heavy games. But if I'm being honest, iOS 16 on the 14 Pro Max overall feels much smoother because of the 120 Hertz refresh rate, but overall, both phones did a really good job at creating an immersive experience. So now that we've taken a look at the software, the next thing I wanna look at is the battery life. The 14 Pro Max would be able to last me all day with eight to nine hours of on-screen time, and my 14 would give me six to seven hours on a consistent basis. With the 14 Pro Max, I will usually end my days with about 20%, which was really good. And with the regular 14, the battery will be on 10%, which was still really good. Also, I didn't really use power saving mode for this test, so the 14 Pro Max is much better when it comes to pure performance. Now, when it comes to charging speeds, both the 14 and 14 Pro Max were pretty much identical. The fast charging did okay. I would usually charge them overnight, but whenever I charge them during the day, after about an hour and some change, they would be at 100%. So overall, I would say that the battery on both phones were really good. So if you're someone who is looking to get the 14 or the 14 Pro Max, then the 14 Pro Max is a better buy and will last you longer. So now that we've taken a look at the battery life, the next thing I wanna look at is the speakers. Now when it came to bass, 
I would say that the 14 Pro Max's speakers were definitely better. It made listening to songs much more enjoyable. The 14s was still pretty good, especially when compared to other phones in the market. But if I'm being honest, it really couldn't compare. The sound quality on both of them were also really good. Music sounded nice videos were loud and clear, and the speakers overall enhanced my viewing experience because they were just that good. And to give you guys an idea on how both these speakers sounded, I'm going to play a video so that you can see how loud they are. And now the final thing that I want to look at when it comes to the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the iPhone 14 is the cameras. Now the cameras on the 14 Pro Max and 14 were pretty much the same when it came to quality. The 14 Pro Max has a 48 megapixel main camera backed by a 12 megapixel ultra wide and telephoto lens, and the 14 has a 12 megapixel main camera backed by a 12 megapixel ultra wide, but I still wanted to show you guys how each of them did. Now heads up, one thing that I'm realizing is that people's views on cameras are very subjective because I may choose a side, but you guys might think the other one looks better. So I'm gonna show the pictures and let you guys decide on which ones are better. Like right here, you can see my outside daytime photos, and I would say that these were really good pictures that turned out really well. The skies were very colorful and vibrant. The trees and other aspects of nature were very nice. My face looked very color accurate, especially when compared to last year's version where it would get yellow at times. And the overall vibrancy of the outside pictures were pretty great to no surprise. Now, when it came to video quality, both of these phones were great within their respective categories. And to give you guys an example, here are some videos that I took on it. So here's the final question, should you buy the iPhone 14 or the iPhone 14 Pro Max? Well, in my honest opinion, I think that most people should side with the 14 because if I'm being honest, most of the stuff that the Pro Max has to offer isn't really worth it that much. But if we're being honest, the 14 Pro Max is a much better purchase, but ask yourself, is the extra features actually worth it? And if they are, you should go for it. And there it is, my comparison between the iPhone 14 Pro Max and the iPhone 14. Now let me know down in the comments. What phone do you guys think is worth it for you? Let me know. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I'd like to say thank you for sticking around. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe. It will be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And I will see you guys on the next one. Peace.